Joe Hopkins here, and I am surrounded by guitars at the moment because I'm going to talk to you about something. What budget guitar is best for the professional musician? Like, you want to be a pro, you want to play on stage, you want to get paid, you want to do studio work, you want to do all those things. What's the best one to get and, and not spend a ton of money, right? So there we go. Uh, let's talk about where to start where to start I bought this one a little bit ago did a review on it this is my hard luck Kings bombshell and it is an excellent guitar as far as feel sound it came set up it was with the setup and shipping and everything three hundred dollars three hundred bucks is definitely a pretty good deal for a guitar that I would say is as, as good as anything you're gonna get, right? This is an excellent, excellent guitar. And, uh, you know, you can check out Hard Luck Kings. In, in fact, uh, I'll put most of the websites, if I can find them, down uh, in the description, but you can check them out. They got a lot of guitars, not just strats, but they got like Les Pauls and, you know, basses, and they've got uh, other types of guitars. They got all sorts of stuff, right? But Definitely, I bought this because they looked like they were really good guitars, and they are. And for, you know, 200 bucks for the guitar and 100 bucks for shipping and setup and the whole thing, 300 bucks, that is definitely a good deal on a professional level guitar. And I definitely say it is a professional level guitar. Ah, let me get my other newer instrument here. I bought this recently. This is my Wolf WLP. If you want something with humbuckers, Les Paul style guitar. It also came set up in the whole deal, right? Uh, feels great, plays great, is an awesome instrument, professional level instrument. I bought a case with it. With the case and everything, I think it was $509. It's a $450 guitar and, and I bought a hard case with it. So, you know, you're looking at 450, 500 bucks. And if you're playing gigs, you you want a case, right? You want to get a hard case if you can, at least a good gig bag. But if you're traveling a lot, a hard case is good. So that's, you know, a good thing to have. So 500 bucks, you have guitar and case. Definitely an excellent deal on an instrument which plays and sounds amazing, right? And it looks great. And that's, that's a good deal on what I would consider to be a professional level instrument. It, this is a good guitar. So, Wolf, yeah, AIO. Uh, they're, they're sold through all in one guitars, and there's the AIO brand there too, and they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah. And uh, it's good stuff. Let me put that back down here, and I'll grab a, another one. There we go. Let's see what we got here. I've got my Harley Benton. Harley Benton makes some very good instruments. This is, uh, what do they call this? Their SC Custom FR, something like that. It's got the Floyd Rose in it, but you can get the, uh, the, uh, their SC without the Floyd Rose if you want that. I wanted a Floyd Rose guitar, and this is my Floyd Rose guitar. It's got, a, it even has like the, the coil splits, the push-pull pot for coil splits. You can get a ton of sounds out of this. The uh, Roswell pickups sound amazing, and this is a pretty sturdy guitar. You could take this on tour. I mean, I really believe this would hold up to the rigors of the road. It plays good. Uh, I'd say it's didn't come as well set up as the Wolf or the uh, Hard Luck Kings guitars, but it's still set up pretty good. I like it. I think it's an excellent instrument. I could probably lower the action a hair, but I kind of like it where it is, uh, you know. But it, it's a good guitar, right? Unlike uh, Hard Luck Kings and Wolf AIO, uh, Harley Benton, you might like the way they feel out of the box, but uh, you might have to do a little bit of setup on it. You might have to, you know, adjust a few things. So we'll put that back down here, and we'll take another... Look at something else. What else have we got here? I also have, I have an acoustic guitar. Now I have an Xavier electric guitar, right? I have their Telecaster. It, it's still hanging up on the wall. It's also a professional level guitar that I spent about 200 bucks on. Good guitar, 
and I'd, I'd consider that to be a professional level guitar. But this is my Xavier Acoustic. It's a good sounding guitar. It's, uh, I mean, actually, it's an excellent sounding guitar. It plays well. The setup is pretty good uh, right out of the box. It, it's an excellent instrument. If you play acoustic guitar, this is a fine professional guitar, right? But when we talk about professional guitars, people think that means uh, a good guitar, that like a higher quality instrument that a professional would play. And the truth is, professionals play all kinds of stuff. Because if, if you play gigs, if you play live, if you record in the studio, one of the best things you can have is the guitar that you feel comfortable with, that works well for you. Because the main thing is, you want to sound good, you want to be comfortable, you want to play well. <clears throat> so what you want to do is, you know, those guitars are all really good. They're excellent. I love them. But when it comes to recording, or playing live even, the question is, what's the guitar you pick up the most? For whatever reason, it just feels good in your hands. I can show you for live, playing live, this is the guitar over the years I, I played the most. E you know, for a while it was my only guitar, but even when I had other guitars, this is my Harmony, uh, what's it called, the H80T. It's basically a Harmony Strat copy. You can get these for $100 to $120 used, because they don't make new ones anymore. I bought this back in like, I don't know, 95. This was made in the 80s. I bought it for like 90 bucks at a pawn shop. Right? And uh, it would be considered... A very cheap guitar but I like the way it sounds especially the bridge pickup uh, you can even see where the the pickups oh man I've had this for so long even like the little the little uh, posts on the ends of the pickups are got some rust on them I haven't changed the strings in a while and uh, it's covered in stickers but uh, this is the guitar I, I played live probably the most. This is the one I reached for time and time again whenever I had a gig. And this guitar is probably the one that the, the most recorded electric guitar I have. I use this in the studio a lot. And the main reason why is for the longest time it just felt comfortable. It felt comfortable in my hands. I could play it easily because it was comfortable. It just felt right. It's the one I was used to, I guess you would say, which makes it very, um, very valuable to me in certain ways. Especially since, uh, with all the other guitars I've purchased over the years, nothing else quite feels like it. The neck is just a little bit weird, I'd almost say, but it, it's weird in a way that is comfortable for me. And if you find that, if you find the guitar that has some oddity to it that really makes it more comfortable for you that's the guitar you want and it really doesn't matter what brand name it is or how cheap it was if that's what feels comfortable that would that's what feels comfortable now my wife and i recorded a lot of music at one time we did uh, released several albums and recorded a lot of singles and we did stuff for other people and this here is my most recorded guitar period of all my guitars that harmony is the most recorded electric guitar i have this one is the most recorded guitar i have this is a yamaha c40 classical guitar it's i don't even know if they make these anymore i think my brother spent like 100 bucks on it 110 something like that when he was uh, studying music in college and then he gave it to my wife Mostly because he, he focused more on the piano and he plays bass. He was never much of a guitarist, never much into the guitar. So after college, he, he needed one for school. He gave this to my wife so that we could play uh, classical guitar duets. Because I, have a, <clears throat> I already had a classical guitar, which is my most played guitar. But this is the most recorded because it sounded just perfect for the type of uh, folk 
and folk rock that we were primarily doing at the time. And uh, probably my most played guitar live, where the harmony is my most play, you know, my most gigged electric guitar. This is probably my most gigged guitar, period. Because my wife and I would play acoustic a lot. That harmony I used to grab all the time when, uh, when I was a, in high school and shortly out of high school when I played in a lot of rock and punk bands. But my wife and I played a lot of folk music, and we grabbed this one. This is a guitar that went everywhere with us. And it's because it, it sounds right. Let me see if it's in tune. Yeah, the strings are old, but it's mostly in tune. Yeah, so this guitar went with us everywhere. It is uh, spent a lot of time being recorded in the studio because it sounds right, it feels right, especially for my wife. This is probably her favorite guitar uh, to play. And that that's really what matters. At the end of the day, you're looking for what sounds right, what feels right, what fits in your hands well, without price being... A, a, a high consideration. Um, I mean, if you can afford an expensive guitar and you like the way it feels, great. But even if you can afford an expensive guitar, if you pick up the cheap one and it feels right and it has the sound you want, and especially you can get a lot of different sounds from your amp or with microphones. Or I mean, acoustic guitars, obviously, it's not the case. With electrics, the, the amplifier has more to do with the sound than the guitar does a lot of times. And you can replace pickups, but you find that guitar that just feels right. It feels like it belongs in your hands. That's the one you want. And for obvious reasons. I mean, come on, man. The one that feels right is the one that feels right. And it's hard to say what guitars will be worth something someday. My dad bought a Maz Wright guitar in like 1977, 78, something like that. He bought a Maz Wright Celebrity hollow body guitar. It was a hundred bucks. Those things go for like five, six thousand dollars now. <laughs> because Maz Wright went out of business and they're rare, especially uh, like his was built in late 60s sometime before uh, Semi Mosley sold the company. So it's a particularly valuable guitar. We don't have it anymore. I unfortunately sold it some years ago, and I probably shouldn't have. But uh, needless to say, that guitar felt right in his hands. And at the time, that was a cheap guitar. It was a hundred bucks. Uh, so it's hard to say what will be valuable someday. But if it feels right in your hands and you play it well, that's priceless. Let me show you, because I have all these guitars. I, and I've shown off a lot of them on, on my channel. But the electric guitar these days that I pick up the most is probably my favorite electric guitar. I'm really enjoying that Wolf right now, but probably my favorite electric guitar is this one right here. This is my Harley Benton DC kit guitar. It, it came as a kit. I put it together, painted it myself. I think at the time these kits were going for like $83. And I spent a couple bucks on some... Uh, yellow spray paint in the clearance bin because I wanted yellow and I put it together and it is uh, it's probably my most favorite electric guitar to play and I think part of it's because it was a kit guitar and because I had to do everything myself I was real careful about setting everything up exactly the way I wanted it so this whole thing I mean it's intonated just right for me it's, uh, it's set up the pickup heights are just right for me. The string height is just right for me because I had to, I had to do all those things myself because I was building it. It's one of the benefits of getting a kit guitar. At the end of the day, <clears throat> you end up with something that's exactly right for you because you have to do everything. Even the color is what I wanted. This is pretty much the guitar I wanted because I put it together. <laughs> And you got to think, with paint and everything, I got maybe 110 bucks in this guitar. That's not expensive, but I like the way it sounds. I, I was figuring on changing the pickups at some point, but I really like the way these sound, the ones that came with it. So I like the way it sounds. I love the way it feels. It fits right in my hands, and this is the one I enjoy playing 
the most right now and have since I built it. And I'd say that's likely be, like I said, because I put it together. But the point is, which guitar is best for a pro, especially which budget guitar? Because if you're on a budget, you want something inexpensive. And the truth is, any of them, any of these are ideal. Any of the ones I showed you are ideal for recording or for playing live. Now, some guitars uh, aren't built as well as others. You know, if you play it a lot, if you tour with something a lot, uh, play a lot of gigs with something, some guitars won't hold up as well as others. Most of the, pretty much all the ones I mentioned here, I think would hold up just fine. I, I know the Harmony and the Yamaha will because I gigged them a lot, relentlessly. I beat the hell out of them and they're still perfectly fine. So, you know, stood the test of time. Things like my Wolf and my Hard Luck Kings guitars, <clears throat> they seem very well built. I'm sure they'll stand the test of time, but I haven't owned them long enough to say from experience. This one I've had a couple years, and I've played it a lot. I know it'll do well. I know it'll hold up. It's held up. It already has, you know, held up. So th the point here is, which guitar should you get? And that's a decision you have to make. You have to look around and find the guitar that you like. You like the way it sounds. You like the way it feels. If you like the way it looks, too, that's great. But you don't really have to be that married to the look, I guess, uh, because you're a musician. We're musicians. How it feels and how it plays is more important than how it looks. And it's more important than price. So if you find a, a guitar you love, play the hell out of it, man. The professionals play the guitars they like. And if you pay attention, some of them are playing guitars that aren't expensive or aren't the ones that everybody else plays. They're not the professional level guitars. A lot of them guys are just playing what they like. And you'd be surprised what a lot of people have recorded with over the years just because they like the way it, it feels, they like the way it plays, they picked it up and it felt right, so that's what they went with. So you guys out there, <clears throat> check out some of these guitars or some others, or, I mean, it doesn't really matter. And, uh, you know, have fun, enjoy yourself. Especially look at some of the really cheap ones, because there's nothing like a $100 guitar to uh, take out and, and beat the crap out of. Because <laughs> if you're really, if you're going to play a lot of bars and parties and stuff like that, maybe not spend, you don't want to spend a lot. I don't know. I've, uh, I've played a lot of rough places, and I'm glad I had my, uh, my harmony, because a hundred dollar guitar, if it gets messed up, is uh, it's less frightening than if you spent a thousand dollars on it. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, you, you keep rocking out there. All right, guys. Hey, peace out, baby. Bye bye.